Namaha. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stavditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Godavani Pacharine Nirasesa Sunyavadi Pasjat Yade Satarine Pancha Kalpa Turista Kripa Sindhu Devija Padita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Ganadar Srivasari Gor Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Anjali, are you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm here. Hare Krishna, can you hear me, Guru Maharaj? Yeah, how many people online? Uh, there is uh, 14 devotees, Guru Maharaj, online. Okay, so we are going to, again continue with the second day in our discussion on some of the activities and glories of Sri Hanumanji. Thank you, Guru So yesterday, or at least, was it yesterday or the day before? Yes, yeah, it was yesterday. We narrated where <clears throat> Hanuman had crossed the ocean and he had arrived at Lanka and it's in the early morning hours, and he uh, disguised himself, and now he is looking for Sita. So this is not an easy job. He doesn't know even what Sita looks like. We all know that Sita was captured by Ravana from the forest when Hanuma and when uh, Ram was away. And now it's been understood that Sita is there under the clutches, under the pressure of Ravana, and he is threatening her unless she submits to his lusty desires, he will kill her after one year. Hmm. So now she's in distress. And Hanuman has entered this huge, grand city. It's still in the early morning hours before people are waking up. It's past the nighttime. It's like, you might say around one or two in the morning. And he is looking around, looking around. So he has to try to find out who is Sita amongst all these ladies who are present there. So he's decided that no, no, this is not a job for a brahmachari, trying to find ladies. <laughs> so, and he's going from place to place looking, and then he dismisses every lady he sees. And then he comes to the palace of Ravana and he looks in the window and there's Ravana laying on his bed, drunk from the night before, asleep. And he sees there's a bunch of ladies all laying around him. And he's thinking, is one of them Sita? No, Sita would never do that. So finally he realizes he's tried to look everywhere in the city. He spends hours looking, looking, looking. He can't find Sita anywhere. Finally, he get, he hears a voice from the sky, go to the Ashoka Grove. Ashoka Grove. He hears the words, but he doesn't know where it is. So then he's looking around, looking around, and then there's a wind that blows, and it's blowing the fragrance from the flowers from the Ashoka Grove. So he follows that windy scent. Finally, he comes to this area, which is just near uh, in the city, but away from all the palaces. It's a beautiful, beautiful grove with so many trees and plants and shrubberies. 
and flowers and so many nice natural arrangements that are so pleasant to the senses. And then he's looking around, ha! who's that? Oh, Ravana? No, I'm Hanuman. Hanuman? No, you're Ravana. Sita sees him. She doesn't know what to think. Mm. I'm a messenger. Ram doesn't know where you are, but we have found you. We have come on his behalf. Oh, are you sure? You could be Ravana. I don't trust you. <laughs> because Ravana could change his form at will and become anything he wanted to be. So she's looking, she's looking, she's looking. So it says, Rahamadi said, he was talking with Mother Sita. He said, I'm a monkey. I cannot just come like a saintly person and go. I want to do some naughtiness here in the forest. And then she said, well, you have to prove you're a messenger of Ram. So he expanded himself and he became as big as the sky. Huge. And he was touching the sky. Big giant monkey. Hanuman had that power. And then he shrunk himself down and he said, Rama, 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 Rama. Sita was thinking, no demon can chant Rama's name like that. <laughs> so he must be a messenger. And then Hanuman said, here, this is the proof. And he takes out a ring. It was a ring that Sita had given to Ram. Only Sita and Ram knew about this ring. And Ram gave it to Hanuman and said, if when you find Sita, you show her this ring, then she will know that you're actually my messenger. So he showed her the ring and she started to cry. Oh, why isn't Ram coming? Why is he coming to save me? Hanuman said, he doesn't know where you are. We we're trying to find you. I found you. Now, here's the chance. Just jump on my back. I will take you across the ocean back to where Hanu to where Ram is. She said, but you're a monkey. You like to eat fruit and you'll stop and to the trees and start eating fruit. And then I'll shake and fall off. <laughs> See, he said, no, I have enough fruit for a while. So then she said, but actually, I belong to Ram. And so Ram will have to save me. Because if Ram doesn't save me, then the glory of Ram will be lost. And I cannot touch another person. So Hanuman could understand that. So he said, you just stay here and I'm going to do some monkey business. <laughs> so he slapped his thighs. Getting ready for action. <laughs> Not like that. When he hit his thighs, it echoed everywhere, you know, it's just like, and he started to take rocks and throw it and break the shrubbery of the garden. And then he took out an iron pipe and start smashing everything. He was shouting and slapping his shoulders. He said, I'm a servant of Brahm. Who will stop me? I will destroy Sri Lanka. I will swallow Ravana. <laughs> and he was starting to exhibit his power. Anybody as, who was as powerful me as me, come and fight with me. And he's yelling, challenging, jumping, and he was just eating fruits at the same time and spitting it out. <laughs> so he was eating and challenging at the same time. Only Hanuman can do that. So then 
It's been a long time since he had landed there. It's been six and seven hours. Finally, one minister came and, and he, he opened his mouth and said, Yelly, what are you doing? The minister says, hey, hey, stop. Hanuman said, I'm a monkey. What do you expect? <laughs> the minister felt very bad. And he went into a forest and asked the demoness, what are you doing? A monkey is doing so much harm. They said, what are you doing? The monkey is doing so much. But why are you telling us? Yes, I am doing, the minister said. And then he went to Rob and he said, a monkey has passed urine in my mouth. <laughs> Ravana said, you came to report this? <laughs> and he gave him a slap. What kind of caretaker are you? <laughs> You come and tell me that monkey passed urine in your mouth. The minister said, what, would I, what am I supposed to do? I was speaking to him and all of a sudden he had to pass urine and he aimed it at me. <laughs> well, you have to do something. And then he started destroying. He said, and then he said, but he's destroying your Ashoka grove. What? One single monkey is destroying my Ashoka grove? The monkey's smashing everything. Monkey, and then, let's see. He was trying to figure out what to do. So then he sent one of his younger generals named Jambulali, Jambu Mali, Jambu Mali. Jambu Mali is in, he lives in a big lake of wine. He stays drunk all the time. He sleeps in wine. <laughs> He is sleeping there now, and whenever he wakes up, he drinks a little. <laughs> and then again, he sleeps, and then he wakes up and drinks some more. He can't wait to fill up his cup, so sometimes he takes too much in a time. So but then they woke up Jumbo Mother. They said, hey, here's some anti-liquor medicine. Here, take this. We need you to become sober because we have a job for you. What job? What job? There's a monkey. You bothered me with monkeys? What are what, I'm, I'm going back to sleep. No, no, he, he's a fight. We need, we need you to fight him. Okay, since I'm going to fight, that's all right. I'm going. And he came and he said, I'm going. And he said, no, no, I'm not going to fight with a monkey. I'm going back. No, no, it's not another monkey. He's a great monkey. He finished the whole of Sokovana in... So take some soldiers with you, 80,000 soldiers. He's very powerful. So Hanuman was sitting on top of an ark. And he was saying, I am the servant of Ram. Where there is a fight with me, I can swallow Ram. Come on, Ravana, I'll challenge anybody. Hey, monkey, what are you talking? You talk too much. <laughs> you, don't you understand that Ravana's son has tied up Indra to a flagpole here? Don't you know that the nine planets are serving in the kitchen, cutting subjis? <laughs> what do you know? You don't know the power of Ravana. You don't know the power of my father, Prahasta. He has eaten mountains and digested him. Hanuman said, all things will pass. <laughs> what about now? What happened? But you should look. I'll also tell you that the whole Ashoka drove, grove has been destroyed. Don't waste time. Fight, Jumbo said, what? You think you can fight with me? What are you talking? And he began throwing rocks. <laughs> the rocks were coming fast and furious and he couldn't fight and he couldn't take them. So he jumped on his chariot and Hanuman said, oh, these demons are very cultured. <laughs> He's sitting on a chariot doing achman, chanting mantras and firing ostras. <laughs> All of these asuras are coming. Hanuman was holding them, breaking them. <coughs> Jambu Bala said, now he saw this. He said, I'll do some magic. And he began to grow big. Hanuman was only at his ankle. He was growing so big. He got bigger and bigger. Then what is this? Jambu Bala was thinking. He was thinking, that's big. All right, I'll grow more. His eyes were closed and he grew more. And he said, I have grown so much. And he opened his eyes, Jambu Bali, Jambu Bali opened his eyes and he saw this big round thing standing in front of him. And he didn't know what it was. And Hanuman said, just look up. And there was Hanuman. 
bigger than he was. He was confused and he heard a sound from above. Jambo Bali, you're looking at my knees. <laughs> he looked up and Hanuman was way up there. My God, what a growth. This is the topmost of I can do. I'm only up to his knees. Then Jambo Bali looked back because he wouldn't, didn't want to discourage the soldier. He said, what are you doing? I am finished. He had finished already, the 80,000 soldiers already. They weren't even there. He, he looked, looked to see if his army was there and they were all destroyed already. <laughs> Hanuman didn't waste time. Then, Ra, and then Hanuman took a pillar and he just, and then, what do you say? Well, ground, and then he took this pillar and he smashed it on the head of Jambubali and his horses. And then he said, if you take shelter of my feet, which are way down there, <laughs> then I'll give you some mercy and you could achieve the goal of life. I'll give you three minutes, Jambubali. There's one nice mantra I'll teach you. If you chant this mantra while dying, you will attain the Supreme Lord. If you chant, uh, it is Rama. Jambu Bali said, what? I didn't come here to learn mantras. I came here to fight with you. <laughs> I want to finish you. Hanuman said, you cannot do that. So you might as well do this. <laughs> you cannot finish me. So why don't you do something within your means? Just chant Rama's name and go back to Godhead. Jambu Bali screamed, ah, and jumped on Hanuman, put his, Hanuman put his index finger in his navel and lifted him up, circled him around. And then he pushed in and his liver and everything else came out of his mouth and he died. Ah, Rio, <laughs> successful operation, the patient died. <laughs> And then, oh, then Ravana got the word, so he sent Indrajit, and Indrajit came. Indrajit's very powerful. So he had this uh, weapon that was given to him by Lord Brahma. And it was a weapon he could shoot and it could tie anybody up. So he shot this arrow and all these snakes came and they tied up Hanuman. Hanuman thought, I should honor this weapon, so I'll stay tied up. Anyway, I want to meet Ravana. <laughs> so he came, they brought him, and Ravana said, what's this monkey? Well, he's destroyed your Ashoka Grove and 80,000 soldiers in Jambu Valley is no more. <laughs> so, uh, and Hanuman said, I've come here to discuss politics with you. <laughs> Just give up Sita. You got so many nice ladies here. And he started describing some of the ladies, how nice they were. You know, you, this one lady, she can dance better. And Sita's not so nice looking compared to your, the ladies you got here. <laughs> so he's using a little, little diplomacy. <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, Ravana says, I'm not giving up Sita. And then Hanuman said, well, give me a place to sit. I want to discuss this with you. I don't give seats to monkeys. <laughs> Well, you you know I'm your I'm your I'm a messenger. So you treat me properly. You're a monkey. <laughs> so then Hanuman created his own seat. He made his tail in a circle and he sat on top of that. <laughs> so he had his own seat. <laughs> he must be a demigod. They said. <laughs> okay. So then there was a discussion. Then finally. Uh, Ravana said, well, I think we'll kill you. <laughs> and then Vibhishan was there. He said, brother, you know the rule. You cannot kill a messenger, but you can punish him. Yes. What is the, what is the monkey's most prized possession? His tail. So let's set his tail on fire. Hanuman was thinking, ah, good. Now I can burn down the city. <laughs> So they said it, they wrapped it in rags and tied it tight and put oil all over the rags and set it on fire. And Hanuman just burst out of the ropes because, you know, he was just acting like he was tied up. 
And then he started jumping and he jumped out of the palace and he was jumping from palace to palace. He was setting the place on fire. Everything was burning. The Rakshashas were working up, were waking up and everybody was running this way and that way. What's going on? Somebody says, there's a monkey. He's got a fiery tail and he's burning everything. Oh no, let's go. Let's see if we can stop him. So then Hanuman thought I'm burning everything. But what happened? Ooh, maybe I burnt Sita. <laughs> so I should go check. And he went into the Ahsoka Grove and he saw that Sita was all right. And then again, he tried to bring Sita, but she said, no, I have to wait for Ram. He said, don't worry, I will be back. And then he ran to the top of the wall in Lanka and looked down. He said, just see, what I have done is only a small portion of what you will receive in the future when Ram comes. And then he went. <laughs> jumped across the ocean and landed back in India. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> So oh, this is a beautiful story here. And that's all there is to that story. <laughs> okay, and then <clears throat> the word was out now that Ram and all the monkeys knew where, because the monkeys had been sent in four directions. Some went to the north, some went to the east. Some went to the west and some went to the south. The ones that went to the south were under the guise of Hanuman. And they that's the monkeys that, when Hanuman jumped across, they waited for Hanuman to come back. And when Hanuman came back, then Ram, who was chanting Japa, Ram chanted Japa for four months. There's a place. I went to that place. You can go. It's a cave, and in the cave, there's a deity of Ravana, uh, Ram, and he's got Japa beads in his hand, and he's chanting the names of Sita. And for four months, he fasted and simply chanted on beads. He was in anxiety or lamentation, feeling the separation of Mother Sita. And so he, for four months, he went into a cave and just chanted Japa. We went there, <clears throat> it's in the area of Humpy, where Hanuman first appeared. And it's a beautiful deity there, you can see, and he's got chapa beads in his hand. <laughs> the cave is, you have to go down to get into the cave. But once you get in, you can go up a little bit. It's a beautiful white rock on the outside and there's all white sand coming into the entrance of the cave. And so Ram stayed there for four, for four months chanting Japa. <clears throat> then he finally was alerted, uh, Sita was found. So now what to do? So now then they're thinking how to cross the ocean. Jai Shishi Panchatattva Ki Jai. And so there are millions and millions of monkeys. Now, during that time, when the monkeys in the other directions were kind of looking for Sita, they got tired looking. It was only Hanuman and his group that could find him. And the other monkeys got a little relaxed and they start eating fruits and just taking, taking it easy. Kind of having a monkey, you know, Mahotsava, just feasting on bananas and other types of fruit. So this went on for a while and then uh, they got a little lazy. <laughs> and then Ram came and said, well, what is your monkeys doing? They're just relaxing here. This is not a time we need to gather all the armies up. And now we have found, we, at least we know where Sita is. And now we have to attack the city of Ravana. He has many millions and millions of powerful Rakshasa soldiers who are equipped with all kinds of military devices, all kinds of weapons, chariots, horses, elephants, and various other forms of carriers such as crocodiles and lizards. And <laughs> they were riding on the back of crocodiles. <laughs> 
So the, uh, the monkey army was big. They had 67 divisions of monkey soldiers. A division is like hundreds and thousands of soldiers, horses, and various, but they, they didn't have horses. They just had monkeys, that's all. And so now they're all standing on the shore of India <laughs> and thinking how to get across. We have to build a bridge, but how can we build a bridge? There's no way you can build a bridge across the water. It's not possible. What rocks sink? <laughs> how are you going to build a bridge? So Ram said, build a bridge. <laughs> and I will write my name on each rock. <laughs> so Ram wrote his name on the rocks and they were throwing the rocks into the ocean and they were not sinking. And then they put one rock after another with Ram's name on and they built a bridge 800 miles across and 80 miles wide. And then all the monkeys lined up and but while they were building the bridge, this is an interesting story. One little spider, some people say spider and some people say squirrel, was throwing little pieces of grain into the ocean trying to help build a bridge. He wanted to, he wanted to do his service too. And Hanuman was throwing these big boulders with Ram's name on it. And then he said to the little squirrel, move aside. This is man's work. <laughs> the squirrel said, oh. And Ram saw that and he said, Hanuman, you are working to your capacity and he is working to his capacity. That is bhakti, that is service. So Ram wanted to teach that if you're working to your capacity, then we always have more capacity. <laughs> Sometimes we hold back. <laughs> we can give a little more. <laughs> oh, it hurts. We have to work to our capacity. That means you have to give everything you have at every minute. <laughs> and then that is bhakti. And so Ram wanted to teach that it's not so much what you're giving, it's that you should give whatever you have to give. That's, that's a very essential principle of bhakti yoga. So we can appreciate even those who... The, are apparently not doing so much or can't do so much, but they're doing their best. That's that's bhakti. <laughs> so that was uh, so it says that you can travel across the ocean of material existence by the name of the holy the holy name of the Lord. So this was also the the message as the name of Ram was being written on the rocks and the rocks were making the bridge to cross the ocean. So we crossed the ocean of material existence by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Then there's no limit to how much we can cross any ocean. Any ocean becomes, as it says, for those who are chanting the holy names, the ocean of material existence shrinks to a little small puddle where you can walk over it by the power of Krishna's mercy, holy name, by Ram's holy name. And so now the armies are going and then they finally they cross the bridge and they're standing on the shore of Lanka outside the gate. And then Ravana, he's there in the Ashoka Grove and he's trying to harass Sita more, trying to break her chastity, break her will. And everything he tries, she refuses. 
he cannot change. He says, actually, and then he tries to play a trick on her. He says, actually, you know, Ram has been killed. And so there's no need for you to resist anymore. I'll make you my number one queen. You'll have the best of all palaces. You'll have 200 maidservants always at your disposal to take care of any of your needs at any time. You'll have all the luxuries. My city is full of opulence, gold, jewelry, precious stones, everything. It'll all be yours. Just become mine, she says. No, <laughs> not in, in so many words, she said she was. And then this generals ran up and said, there's a, there's a huge army outside the city. We have to rally the troops and resist. So then Sita understood he was lying. <laughs> so he got caught in his own lie. <laughs> so then Ravana came and then the Armies met and there's a huge battle and that battle goes on. I think I described that battle the other night. How many times Ravana was sending some of his chief generals and they were simply being destroyed one after another by the monkeys. And the monkeys, what did they have? They had trees that they took from the ground. They had rocks. They had their nails, their teeth. And they were fighting with nails, teeth, kicking the opponents, punching them, and you hitting them in the heads with big rocks. And, <laughs> and the uh, the Rakshasa army had all these chariots with swords and axes and various kinds of weapons, scimitars. But still, they were being defeated by this monkey army. <laughs> Prabhupada said, I left India and I crossed the ocean and I found some monkeys and I brought them back. <laughs> Refer, referring to us. <laughs> and so I wanted to, I wanted to recapture Sita and bring him back to Ram. In other words, the materialists, they have taken the energy of the Lord in the form of the Lord's possessions, the Lord's opulence, but they don't want the Lord. So I'm trying to reunite Sita and Ram again. And so therefore I have created this army of monkeys. <laughs> Papa said that, I'm not just making it up or trying to be funny, you know, and Prabhupada said that. And he looked at us and he could tell we were like monkeys. <laughs> we had monkey habits. <laughs> but Prabhupada thought, you know, if Ram could fight with some monkeys, let me give him a try. I'll try to train these monkeys too. <laughs> And sometimes it was a little slow in getting the training done, but <laughs> some of the monkeys were, became pretty good. <laughs> that was Prabhupada was just trying to understand. So Prabhupada, yeah, this is this whole, this is the whole thing to reunite. Prabhupada said, I want to take India's knowledge and the West, the wealth of the West, the knowledge of Shastra, and the wealth of the West and combined it, and that's my movement. To, Prabhupada wanted to recapture everything that was being destroyed by the Western civilization in order to enjoy more and more economic development and sense gratification. That was Prabhupada's mission. So it's an, an analogous to Ram and with the monkey soldiers free trying to capture the uh, Sita. Sita represents the goddess of, she is the goddess of fortune, but she represents opulence, opulence. And so everyone wants God without, 
Everyone wants the energy of God without God. Everyone thinks, you know, let me become wealthy, let me become famous, let me become influential, let me have this, let me have that. But God, he's simply, well, if I, you know, because people think if I could be material successful, then what do I need God for? Because people pray to God just to get material success. So I'm materially successful. I don't need to pray to God because I've already achieved it. Yeah, they think like that. That if I can get it with my intelligence, why, why should I pray to God? So they think like that. And so there's some nice stories of Hanuman, and I'll tell a few. Hmm. It's, there was one man, he was performing. Uh, he wanted to be, he wanted to gain the favor of Hanuman so he could ask Hanuman for many benedictions because he knew Hanuman was very uh, charitable and also very powerful. So there was, he went to one guru and the guru said, well, there is a yagya that you perform to Hanuman and you have to perform this yagya for 18 days. And after 18 days, Hanuman will appear to you and you can ask him for whatever you want. Man said, fine. So he performed the yagya and he finished 12 days. And after the 12th day, because he did the yagya so good, Hanuman appeared to him and said, you have called me? The man said, yeah, but the yagya is for 18 days, so come back in six days. <laughs> so Hanuman said, this guy's a nonsense. <laughs> So he just left. Now, what does that indicate? <clears throat> There's a certain spiritual message there. Uh, okay, I'm doing RT. What is it? I got four to the feet. One, two, three, four. I got it. Okay, two to the waist. One, two, three to the head. Got it. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven. Okay, next deity. Okay, four, two, three. Got it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm, I'm really doing RT really good. Okay, yeah, I got to finish on time too. Okay. <laughs> My God, let's just see. Yeah, yeah, now I really, I'm really becoming a good Pujari. Yeah. Okay, what's that mantra? Om Namo Panchatattva. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I got it. Panchatattva key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Was that six or seven? Okay, one more, just in case. So you get the message. <laughs> Attached to the ritual, but not to the bhakti. <laughs> no bhakti, it's just, if I do it right, then I got it. <laughs> How's it go again? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. No, no, that's not it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare, 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 Hare. No, no, no. Okay, I'll get it soon, yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare. Oh, that's good, I got it. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Ram, Ram, Hare, Hare. Oh, okay, that's one down, yeah. Okay, no, not yet. I got to finish 108. Oh, no. All right, I'll keep trying. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Ram, Hari, Ram, 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 Hari, Hari, Hari. Gotta beat the clock because I gotta go see my girlfriend. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Ram. Hari, Ram, 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 Hari, Hari. She's gonna call any minute. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari, Hari. Rama, Hari, Rama, 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 Hari, Hari, Hari. She's gonna be mad at me for being late. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna, Hari, Hari, Ram, 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 Hari, 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 don't call yet. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Okay, okay finished my run. Oh, there's the phone. Okay, I finished in time. Boy, boy, I'm really a good chanter. <laughs> oh.
Not like that. <laughs> so yeah, there are people, who, devotees who, it's not so much the bhakti, it's the, the method. So bhakti has the rituals and then the, then the devotion. The rituals are important because they help us keep on track, but they're not the goal. The goal is to awaken devotion in all activities, that's it. It's nice to do the thing right, but even if you do it wrong with bhakti, it's better doing it right without bhakti. <laughs> Bhakti makes the difference. So what is bhakti? Bhakti means you try to do it as nice as you can with a desire to please the Lord. And especially pleasing the Lord's devotees also. Like that. <clears throat> so that's the idea. So there's those who are good at the rituals. We call that, uh, what do we call that? Uh, there's a type of statement for that. Uh, well, these people are very expert at doing all the activities, of, but no bhakti. <laughs> and there's others who have bhakti, but don't really do things exactly right. But still, that is better because eventually they'll do it right <clears throat> in due course of time. So bhakti is the difference. What is bhakti? I'm trying to please the Lord by my activities, by my service. I'm trying to awaken my attraction for the Lord by serving in that way. So doing it nicely is important. Doing it carefully is important, but it's not the only thing. <laughs> yeah. So just like we have, <clears throat> there was one time where <clears throat> Prabhupada was in Vrindavan and uh, so Prabhupada wanted to have kirtan. So devotees had invited this one professional kirtan singer to come to Prabhupada's class. So he was there. So the devotees had asked Prabhupada if he could sing. And so Prabhupada said, yes, okay. So they let him lead the kirtan. Jai Sri Lakshmi Nishringa Bhagavan Ki. Sri Nishringa Jai Nishringa Jai Jai Sri Nishringa Baladadesha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Bringam Ugram Virya Mahavishnu Jwalantam Sarvato Mukham Nishringa Vishinam Badram Mitya Mitya. Somebody opened the door for him. Namami Aham. Okay, Sri Nishringa Bhagavan Ki Jai, Lakshmi Nishringa Ki Jai, Vavagishya Yasya Badane, Lakshmir Yasya Shivakshisi, Yasya Tam Riddayam Samvittam Nishringa Aham Bhaje, Sri Lakshmi Nishringa Bhagavan Ki Jai. That's the Mula Mantra for Lakshmi Nishringa. <laughs> and so. What was I saying? <laughs> huh? Yeah, but I was saying something specific. Oh, what a professional singer. Oh, yeah. So he, he got up and, you know, he's really expert singer. Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, <laughs> they make sure they get that Krishna in there. Krishna. Oops, oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, you know, they. <laughs> so he was, you know, really kind of like 
doing it in with all this. And Prabhupada said, stop him. <laughs> and he pointed to this one devotee, you sing. And this devotee couldn't sing at all. <laughs> Prabhupada chose that devotee. <laughs> so he let him lead. And then all the devotees were listening and saying, what is Prabhupada doing? <laughs> And Prabhupada was like this, <laughs> smiling, so nice. <laughs> and that professional singer was thinking, what happened? <laughs> so, yeah. He was, you know, so Prabhupada wanted to make a point. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about your professional singing. <laughs> it's, it's about bhakti. <laughs> So yeah, so that is that one story. <laughs> and another story where um, Mother Sita, she was putting this sin, sindura, the, that red stuff that the ladies, they put one here when they're married and then they do this. Mm -hmm. You know what this stand, you know what this red mark stands for? Anybody know? You do? You know? Huh? Kamara. Yeah, married, but the Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> voila, voila. <laughs> really good. Well, the origin of that is that when the Kshatriyas used to fight over a lady and they kill the other guy, one of the Kshatriya would be killed and the one would win, he'd get the lady. The one who would win, win, he'd take his finger and dip it into the blood of the dead soldier and he would put it on the woman and that's how it started. So that's that's what really, yeah, very romantic. <laughs> they'd fight over a lady and then they'd take the blood and that's how the, that's how that red star thing started, yeah. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Not so wonderful. <laughs> You guys are not Kshatriyas, that's why. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Sita was putting the red stuff here and Hanuman said, what are you doing, Sita? And she said, well, Ram likes that. Guess what she said. So Hanuman went out and he got a whole bunch of the red powder and he put it all over him. <laughs> and it was completely covered in red. And everybody was saying, Hanuman, what happened to you? <laughs> no, Ram likes that. <laughs> so he put this red powder all over him. He was, he's a white monkey, really, but he was now a red monkey. And sometimes you see pictures of Hanuman, he's red. <laughs> That's that particular pastime like that. There's one pastime where this is after the battle, and this is when Krishna was on the planet. So Krishna was in Dwarka, and he was with uh, Ruk, with Sachibama, his queen, and he was with um, it was with Balaram, and Garuda was there. So Krishna said to Garuda, "Go to Ayodhya." And ask Hanuman to come to Dwarka. Krishna wants to see him. So Garuda left. He's flying. He's powerful. He comes to Ayodhya, and there's Hanuman, and he's worshiping Ram in the deity form. So he's worshiping, worshiping, worshiping. And Garuda's trying to get his attention to let him know that. Krishna's in Dwarka and he's waiting for him. He wants him to come. And he said, Hanuman, you can even jump on my back. I'll take you there really fast because Garuda's fast and Hanuman's also fast. 
But then uh, Hanuman's not paying any attention. <laughs> He's not listening to him at all. And then uh, Karuna is saying, Hanuman, Hanuman, Krishna's there. He's in Dwarka. He wants to see you. Please come right away. Hanuman's getting annoyed. <laughs> He's getting bothered. So then finally he decides to get rid of Garuda. So he takes his tail, he's got a big tail, and just swashes his tail and hits Garuda. And Garuda goes, he didn't even have to fly. He landed all the way back in Dwarka. <laughs> and then he said, Krishna, why did you give me such a mission, you know? <laughs> and Krishna said, I, I understand. Now you go again and you tell him Ram is there. And Ram is in Dwarka and he's waiting. And then he, he changed himself into Ram. And he said to Satyabhama, Satyabhama, you become Sita. And Satyabhama, she likes to argue with Krishna and she said, no. <laughs> so Krishna gave up, so he didn't try to argue with his queen. And then he said to Rukmini, you do it. And Rukmini said, yes, yes, ma'am. She does, she, she always listens to Krishna. Satyabhama sometimes listens and sometimes doesn't. <laughs> She's an incarnation of Radharani Satyabhama. <laughs> so, yeah, so, and then he said to Balaram, you become Lakshman, so he changed to Lakshman. And then Garuda went there again, and this Hanuman is now worshiping, he's really fixed. And then Garuda says, Hanuman, Ram is in Dwarka, what's, where did Hanuman go? He was just here. <laughs> and then Garuda went back to Dwork and there was Hanuman. <laughs> he was sitting at the feet of Sita Ram and Lakshman. <laughs> now, Hanuman has such attraction for Ram that simply by hearing the name of Ram brings tears to his eyes. He becomes so overwhelmed with love. The love between Ram and and Hanuman is really, really deep, really deep. It's really hard to understand that. It's really, really deep. And so these are some of the pastimes. Um, Anjali, are you still there? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm still here. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for wonderful pastimes. You went to sleep. No, Guru Maharaj. It was so funny watching you. It was really nice. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing a wonderful pastime of Shri Hanuman. Well, she can hear me, right? Can you hear me, Guru Maharaj? Anjali. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. Okay, open it up then. So devotees, if you have any questions, please, um, you can unmute yourself and ask or uh, just type it in the chat box. Everybody... Okay, so I'll stop there and see if there's any questions. Anjali. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I can hear you clear. Uh, I'm not sure if you can. Can you not hear me? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, can you hear me? Hare Paul. Anjali. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. She's Did talking. But we can't can you hear, hear me? Hare, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm talking actually. Everyone else can hear me Guru Maharaj from this side. Uh, so I'm not sure if there is any issues that side. Okay. Anjali. Yes, I can. I can. I can hear you loud and clear, Guru Maharaj. Okay, you can. You can ask the devotees if they have any questions or comments. 
Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, first of all, for your association and uh, uh, sharing the wonderful pastimes of Sri Hanuman. Uh, devotees, if you have any comments, please, comments, questions, realizations, please unmute yourself and ask it or otherwise type it in the chat box. I can, uh, I can uh, question it from your behalf. Thank you. Hare Krishna. How many devotees do we have online? Mm -hmm. Guru Maharaj, we have 17 devotees. Okay. So there is questions, Guru Maharaj, coming up. Is it okay if I ask quickly? There is. Yes, please. If it's on the chat, you speak it. Yep. Uh, so uh, it's from Sri Devi Mataji. Uh, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada and your holiness. How to get this bhakti of Hanumanji? So she's asking how to get this bhakti of Hanumanji. <laughs> you have to take birth as a monkey. <laughs> 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 Is that all right, Sri Devi? What'd she say? I'm not sure if I can say that, but I, I will repeat what she's saying, Guru Maharaj. She's saying, she's saying, I think I'm already a monkey, but no bhakti. That's not mm -hmm. true, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, you can't imitate Hanuman, that's not possible. <laughs> but one thing he's teaching, he's teaching that service to the Lord is his absorption. He's absorbed in serving the Lord, worshiping the Lord. So we can practice that mood by using every moment of the day to keep ourselves and go engage in devotional service. So that requires some uh, determination. It requires good intelligence to understand how I can use the time in the best possible way. And most of all, it, it help. It requires a nice association or strong association, which will inspire you to become like that. So when you start to associate with regularly devotees who are fixed in Krishna consciousness, then you also develop that mood. So it's the mood of Hanuman that you're looking for, and that mood is absorption in service to the Lord. <laughs> He's absorbed. That's why when he went to jump across the ocean, you know, he had so many obstacles. And he had opportunities to slow down, to take it easy, to relax, but he he didn't accept any of that. He was fixed on his mission. So a devotee should be, should know their service and know how to execute their service and become absorbed in that. And that absorption is Krishna consciousness. Is that okay, Sri Devi? Shri Mataji, is that okay? Is that answer your question? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Okay, wow. Any other questions? Yes, Guru Maharaj. So there is one from Mohakshini Radha Devidasi Mataji. Uh, she's saying, Dandbat Pranam Gurudev. Uh, thank you for that great inspiration. Uh, question is, which qualities do we take from Hanuman? <laughs> uh, which qualities do you take from Hanuman? Hmm. Let's see. Well, the one I just mentioned, absorption in service, is, seems to be the outstanding quality. Because when Prabhupada <clears throat> describes the different qualities in one verse in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, in those qualities, there's one other quality that says that unalloyed devotion to the Supreme Lord is one of the qualities. Prabhupada makes the point that that is the most important out of all the qualities. 
So um, when you think, when you see Hanuman, you see he has determination, he has obstacles, but his obstacles don't cause him to, you know, slow down or go in a different direction. So determination allows you to overcome obstacles. There's no obstacles in devotional service unless you see them. If you see an obstacle, it becomes an obstacle. But you can transform an obstacle into an opportunity for service or for greater, uh, greater remembrance of the Lord. So determination is one of the outstanding qualities of Hanuman. He's determined despite the difficulties he has to face. <laughs> so we can learn determination. <laughs> um, thanks. In Kali Yuga, there are so many obstacles, but if you're determined, you can cut through them. Mokshini uh, Mataji, I guess uh, I hope that answers the question. Uh, so, uh, Mokshini Mataji, I do not understand your next question. Guru Maharaj, maybe you might understand. She's asking, uh, what is that like monkey devotion? I'm not sure, maybe Mahakshini Mataji, if you can um, reword that question uh, for us. Thank you. Uh, so Guru Maharaj, there is another question from Archana Siddhi Mataji. Uh, okay. she, uh, she's saying, please accept my humble obeisances, Gurudev. Hanuman expressed his anger by burning Lanka. What type of anger we should control and not control and how to express them? Well, Prabhupada talks about that. If devotees are being blasphemed or uh, are harassed, then we can become upset and angry at the person who is doing that. But for yourself, if you're having some difficulty or someone is causing you difficulty, you don't become angry. You've just become tolerant. But the anger is, Prabhupada calls it Krota Bhakta. That means that anger that's directed against those who blaspheme devotees or blaspheme the Lord. That anger is called devotional service. I remember I was out once on a, out in Sankirtan, <clears throat> and uh, so I was distributing books, and I had this little paperback book, and I met this gentleman. So I was showing him the book. And then he turned the book on the other side and on the back side was Prabhupada's picture on the book. So then he said some funny remark criticizing Prabhupada. So I became really angry. <laughs> I was really angry. And he looked at me, he got scared and immediately left. <laughs> so, so. I just got angry naturally because uh, here's a person who was fighting and criticizing Prabhupada. So, so that's, yeah, that's, that's how a devotee thinks that if the Lord is getting blasphemed or criticized, if that's happening to other devotees, then the, then the devotee gets upset and can exhibit what is called devotional anger. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Arjuna Siddhi Mataji, uh, yeah, she said that. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, so devotees, if you have any questions, you can unmute, unmute or you, ty you can type. Anybody here have any questions? We got one from the local audience here. Okay, so this is our illustrious Dan Danny Lowe. Danny Lowe always has questions that 
he thinks about. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Actually, I have one comment and one question. Uh, and first, uh, uh, the last time on the Rama Navami, I watched Ramayana and I was amazed by the Hanuman that when they returned to Ayodhya, Sita gave him some necklace. Yeah. And he tried to chew and to look inside, searching for Rama. And I was really amazed by how he was fixed always in everything. He watched Rama, where is this? Mm -hmm. And if Rama doesn't there, then it's no value for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything he, he only knows Ram, that's all. <laughs> that's called Drita Vrata, one pointed determination in devotion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question is, uh, I was just uh, wondering uh, for the monkeys that help Ram to build the bridge, Krishna in his lila uh, pay his, uh, pay them back by offering them uh, this butter. Yeah. And is there any in the Shastas, any notice about this spider or squirrel? That he paid back. <laughs> the squirrel got the mercy right on the spot. <laughs> he immediately got the mercy. And he continued to throw his little rocks into the ocean. And Ram was appreciating that. It wasn't just some, you know, exaggeration. He was really appreciating that this squirrel, he's doing his best to serve. And that's... That's bhakti. Krishna has given each and every devotee something that you can use in Krishna consciousness. So use it to the best of your capacity, that's bhakti. Just one question. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the love between Hanuman and Ram is the highest. Is this meant to materially or is on a spiritual level? Spiritual. There's nothing material about the Supreme Lord and his devotee. What is that love? That love is, <clears throat> I just want to make you happy. I just want to please you. Whatever I can do for you, that will benefit you, that will make you happy. Whatever it is, I just want to do that. That's love. When you know a person and you get to know what they're like, you think how to serve them. And then when you think how to serve them, you start learning more about them. And then you think more, more different ways how to serve, how to make them happy, how to please them. Just like today, uh, Mother... Somadatri came to see me and she had this nice bread. I was just sitting down for lunch and I was all ready and she comes in with this wonderful bread and I said, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> just made my meal. <laughs> and our bread was, it was bhakti bread. <laughs> Not, She was so nice. She's always thinking how to do things for me. So uh, that's love. <laughs> love means to serve. And love means to serve, not just to get the service done and then go on to the next thing. Love means to think of how you can do it in the best way. And when you're working with devotees, you think in the same way. What pleases the devotees? Hmm. And then when she walked in the door, I said, is this, she's expanded herself. She's got, there's two somadatris, because the one I know is in Celia. <laughs> and she's not supposed to come back for another two days yet. <laughs> so I thought, she's really trying hard to serve me. So she expanded herself <laughs> into another one so she could be here and at Celia at the same time. <laughs> 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 so I thought, man, yeah, she's got some mystic power. <laughs> 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 
Really? I, you saw when I, I said, I went like this. <laughs> Is that some of that? No, it's an expansion. Du du duplicate. <laughs> looks like the real one. <laughs> yeah, so she has this, um, she likes to serve and she likes to serve really nicely. So that's, that's bhakti, not just to get the, the, the job done, but to serve in the best way, to try to please the Lord and please the devotees. Not like, well, what you see is what you get, too bad, that's all. <laughs> Take it or leave it, that's the way I am. You don't like it, get somebody else. <laughs> no, not like that, it's not, it's not like that. When we understand that devotional service is the highest thing in existence. There's nothing higher than devotionals. No amount of material activities can mat even come close to devotional service. You can put all the benefits of all the material activities together in one place and they don't even come close to one drop of devotion that a devotee can offer. And that's how Krishna sees it. <clears throat> it's, it's really a great privilege to have an opportunity to serve. And when we think like that, then we, and then we, then there's never any problems. <laughs> so Hanuman was like that. He just wanted to do more and do better. And so. There's one story where <clears throat> this was in when the Pandavas were present on the earth. This is way after the Battle of Kurukshetra. I mean, after the Battle of Lanka. And Bhima, he's the son of the wind god. Also, he's also the brother of Hanuman. <clears throat> he was walking in the forest. And then he came to a place where there was this big monkey lying in the middle of the path. And so he came up to the monkey and he says, monkey, I want to pass. So please move aside. Because, you know, it's not polite to jump over somebody that's considered to be bad manners, etiquette. So the monkey said, I'm too old. I can't move. <laughs> so Bhima, Bhima said, well, move. I want to get by. You got to move. He said, I can't move. He said, you move my tail and then you can, you can pass. You know, Bhima, he's strong. So he goes up to the tail because the tail's blocking the path. So he tries to move the tail. And he just thinks it's an ordinary tail. So, he, so and then he grabs it with two hands and he just puts all his energy and he tries, can't move the tail. <laughs> and he, he's thinking, who's this monkey? And then Hanuman turns, he said, I'm your brother, <laughs> Hanuman. <laughs> And then two brothers met because they're both sons of the wind god. And so that was a wonderful exchange of love between the two of them that happened in the forest. Anjali, are you? Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Anything, <laughs> any more coming from the devotees there? Yes, Guru Mara. So there is two questions. One from Lavanya Mataji. Uh, she's asked, yes, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory Shila Prabhupada. All glory to you, Gurudev. Uh, I have a question, Maharaj. Which incarnation is Hanuman? Who, who's speaking the question? This is Lavanya Mataji, Guru Maharaj. Oh, oh Lavanya. Okay. 
Who, what, <clears throat> what incarnation is Hanuman? Yes, that's the question, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, he's the he's the eleventh Rudra of, of Shiva. <clears throat> Shiva has the expansions of Shiva, the Rudras, and there's eleven Rudras. He is the eleventh Rudra. Mm -hmm. And there is another question, Guru Maharaj, from Shidevi Mataji. Uh, and that is, uh, I guess, related. Who is Panchamukha Hanuman? Panchamukha? That means five faces. Yeah, there is a deity. I, see, I saw the deity when I was in Kurukshetra. And there was a deity of Hanuman which had five heads. And um, the different heads were there. There was also a head of Varaha Dev. Hanuman, uh, who else? There was a head of, Sh not Shiva, but one of the Rudras. Yeah, I don't remember the five heads, but Panchamukha Hanuman is another manifestation of Hanuman. who has five heads, yeah. Uh, I've only seen that deity once, and that was in Kurukshetra. <laughs> Well, you could look it up and probably you could find it somewhere in the Google world. <laughs> Panchamukha Hanuman, yeah. He's a powerful, it's an expansion of the Rudras, Lord Shiva. Because Hanuman is also the son of Shiva. Son of the wind god, son of the Shiva, of Shiva. And that's that, that story we narrated yesterday when we were speaking to the devotees in Charlotte. For those of you who are online, you heard how Hanuman took birth from Shiva. Is there any more? Uh, sorry, Kurmaj. There is one more question from uh, Shri Devi Mataji. She is asking, is it good idea to recite Hanuman Chalisa? Please. Well, maybe one of these days coming up because Hanuman's appearance day is on the 27th of this month. So today is the 24th. In three days, Hanuman's appearance day is there. So I'll give a class on that day and I'll We'll chant the Hanuma Chalisa. That's beautiful. It should be chanted, yes. Like that. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I found a picture of Panchmukha Hanuman. Should I share it on the screen? Is it possible? Can you do it? Like I can share it from here. I'm not sure if you can, someone can connect. Yeah, do share screen and see what you can find. Okay. Go ahead, you can get this other ugly guy off the screen. Okay, there it is. Yeah, you see one head of Varaha, and then there's, uh, yeah, that's Panchamukha Hanuma. I don't recognize the other heads, though. Looks like Hayagriva is there also. Mm -hmm. Garuda is there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there, there's different forms of the Panchamuga Hanuman. Thank you, that's really nice. Hanuman is multifaceted. He has so many roles he plays, so many forms he takes. Okay, any more questions from the, the devotees here? Mm -hmm. Comments? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have our Hanuman book distributor here. Yeah, Krishna, he distributes books like Hanuman distributes <laughs> 
his muscles. <laughs> um, I wonder, Maharaj, like, uh, you can hear many times in lectures that, like, you cannot achieve pure bhakti unless you serve pure, de pure devotee. But then I can, f I think further that, uh, like, actually everything you can connect with the mission. So what does this mean to serve pure devotee? Well, your spiritual master, that's the pure devotee. You're following the instructions of your spiritual master, you're serving a pure devotee. And if you please him by that service, then that's perfect. Mm -hmm. So the, that's what it merely means. It refers to the spiritual master. Mm -hmm. But if you, but we shouldn't think I just have to please my spiritual master and that's all. We should try to see how we can serve all the devotees, because all devotees are dear to Krishna. So any devotee you can serve, it's a great opportunity. You should not think, well, I'll serve just my spiritual master and the rest of the devotees. I don't have any time. <laughs> So whatever service you can do for the devotees, I think we were just discussing this today, today that if you're serving the devotees, you're actually doing the best service to Krishna. And if you're trying to serve Krishna without serving the devotees, then there's, there's no benefit in that. Krishna doesn't accept that service. So, Mm, Sachi Nanana Swami tells a story, it's called Community of Care. <laughs> and maybe you've heard this story, it's a beautiful story, where um, it's a scenario where a man goes to heaven and he meets the commander-in-chief of heaven, St. Peter. And he says to St. Peter, what's it like in hell? St. Peter says, come on, I'll show you. So he takes him to hell. And so, uh, so it's time for lunch. And so the bell rings and all the, the residents of hell, they sit around this big round table. And it's a real, it's a circular table and they're all sitting around. And all the food's in the middle. And everyone's got these real long forks. And so when they ring the bell, and they have to, again, as soon as the bell rings, then everybody goes with their fork to try to get the food. So that's, so they ring the bell and then they put their fork out. Because the forks are so big, they're, they're banging into each other's forks and the food's falling over and you can't, then nobody can get it into their mouth. So everybody's frustrated. <laughs> so then, he said, well, this is hell. <laughs> so then the, 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 the man says, well, what's it like in heaven? He said, come on, I'll show you. So he goes up to heaven and same thing. There's a table with all the food in the middle. Everybody's sitting in a circle and they have the big long forks. So the bell rings and then people take the fork and they feed it to the person next to him like this. So everybody's feeding everybody like that and everybody gets to eat. That's heaven. <laughs> so that's the devotees trying to think. Let me think how to serve the devotees. Somehow, we try to think of ways. We do our regular service that we're ascribed to. We have our service with the temple under the guise of this temple president. We do that. But then we should always be thinking or be in the mood of taking opportunities to try to serve the devotees while we're serving, doing our regular service. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's one devotee in America. She's a, she's an elderly. She's maybe even, yeah, she's about my age. And she's a pujari. Prabhupada disciple and what she does is that 
when she does, finishes her puja, she gets some of the maha, usually, you know, the dry maha, and she carries it around with her. And then someday, so just meet some devotee and she'll give him a little bag of maha. She puts it in a plastic bag and says, this is for you. And she'll just pick devotees and just give them like that maha, like that. And then sometimes she'll carry books and then when she meets people, she gives them. She's always thinking when she's outside of her prajari service, how to serve the other devotees. She's always got some ideas. So that's her, that's her meditation. Mm -hmm. hmm. Anjali, any more? Guru Maharaj, there is no questions at the moment now. Okay, good. Uh, we still have about 25 minutes here before the class ends. Should we what should we do? Kirtan. Okay, so we'll do some more kirtan like that. And uh, let's see who can sing. Oh. Well, Aliko Vinda Prabhu, would you like to leave kirtan for a while? I like. <laughs> and I think many people will like also. <laughs> So you could do the honors, we'll be happy. Okay, devotees online, if you want to stay on for the kirtan, we'll be having kirtan for the next 25 minutes till the curtains close at 8 o'clock our time. <laughs> Jai, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for Valuable Association, and uh, today's sharing the pastimes of Sri Hanuman. Thank you ever so much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so we will stay online, Guru Maharaj, for the Kirtan. Chila Prabhupada Ki Jai.